views expressed in the following program are not necessarily the part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. You've got gardening questions? I've got gardening answers. And looking for a way to welcome feathered friends into your landscape? I've got a plan to tantalize Tweety's taste buds. Plus, I'll help you go batty for balls. Cool. You know, I've done so many question and answer segments over the years that I've run out of ways to introduce them. So how about this? Hey gang, it's question and answer time. Paul, I garden in zone six. Can you give me some ideas for shrubs that grow in shade? Why, sure I can. And the list is a lot longer than you might think. But among my favorites are Akubas, Azaleas, Father Gilla, Hydrangeas, Pieris, Viburnums, and Yews. Akuba is an evergreen shrub native to Japan that can grow to 15 feet. This is the variegated form known as the gold dust plant. Azaleas and their cousins, the rhododendrons, are also good choices. Most selections are evergreen, and their spring flowers are gorgeous. Father Gilla is an awesome deciduous shrub for shade, and it's native to the U.S. The dwarf form grows to about three feet, and the larger form can top out at nine feet. Hydrangeas are among the most popular of all deciduous shrubs for shade, and with good reason. They're beautiful. Pieris isn't quite as well known, but it too is a superb choice, and it's evergreen. Viburnums, nearly all of which are deciduous, are excellent for shady spots, which explains why I have over 20 different varieties. And finally, there are the yews, which come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and species. All are narrow-leaved evergreens, and all are relatively pest and disease-free. Actually, there are lots more choices, but the seven you've just seen are among the easiest to find, and more importantly, the easiest to grow. So by all means, plant away! I'm thinking of planting a chokeberry. What do you think? Well, like I just said, plant away. Chokeberry, a member of the genus Aronia, is a great Native American deciduous shrub that's hardy to zone four and virtually pest and disease free. It produces red or black berries depending on the variety. What's strange is that the birds don't actually eat the berries until they've shriveled up like raisins. The berries, not the birds. But that's a good thing, actually, because the berries don't shrivel up until late winter when food supplies are scarce. Hey, gardener guy, vines on trees, good or bad? For the most part, vines can be allowed to grow on trees without posing a risk to the tree. And I must say, in many cases, the look can be quite beautiful. Here, for example, is Virginia creeper making its way up a pine tree. Here's a euonymus vine growing on an old hackberry. And here's some English ivy that seems very much at home on this sand cherry. Ideally, you should plant vines at the bases of old trees because some vines can actually kill young trees. And speaking of vines, check this out. This is a section of a crepe myrtle trunk that I cut and a grapevine actually created this cool twisty pattern in the wood. I live in Kansas City where I can't grow crepe myrtles, yet my sister can grow them on Long Island. What's the deal? Well, the deal is, is that Long Island, despite the fact that it's way, way north of Kansas City, has a climate that's far more hospitable to growing crepe myrtles, largely due to the buffering effects of the ocean. In fact, Kansas City is in Zone 5, whereas Long Island is in Zone 7. Just how important is the spacing requirement that's listed on the back of seed packets? Oh, it's extremely important, but it depends to a large degree on the quality of your soil. For example, let's say that the recommended spacing for leaf lettuce is um, six inches between plants. Well, if your soil is really rich, then you might get a good crop with a spacing of only four inches. But if your soil is average, then you should stick with a six inch suggestion. And if your soil is so-so at best, you might consider spacing the plants up to eight inches apart. Because plants compete for nutrients, a richer soil allows for tighter spacing these lettuce plants, which are growing in a rich mix of compost and shredded leaves, will do fine at about four inches apart, although at the moment they're only two or three inches apart, and that means I've got to thin a few of the young plants by gently lifting them up and out of the ground, taking care not to disturb the surrounding plants. Dude, what do I do with doggy doo-doo? Believe it or not, dog waste is a big problem. 
Many cities classify it as a biohazard and therefore prohibit its disposal in the trash. Dog waste also poses a health risk because it may contain certain pathogens that may affect or infect human beings. And let's face it, those of us who own dogs have a civic duty to manage our dog's duty. And the best way to do that is to build a composter. Take a plastic bucket, drill several holes in the side and cut out the bottom. Then dig a hole to accommodate the bucket, slide the bucket into the hole, and fill the hole with a light layer of gravel, or in my case, expensive black stones from Thailand, since I didn't have any gravel. Each time you make your rounds, drop the droppings in the bucket. Then add about a quarter cup of human septic tank system bacteria, which you can buy just about anywhere. Then, a little bit of water, put the lid on the bucket, and within about 48 hours, it'll begin to break down all that waste. And speaking of dogs, I'm sorry to say that Maggie, my companion and sidekick for the past 13 years, passed away recently. She was a good dog, and she'll be missed. You know, Paul, your hair sure has changed a lot over the years. Do you like it better, long or short? Oh, make no mistake, I'm a long hair at heart. But I've come to terms with shorter hair over the years because, well, it's easier to take care of and it's not as hot in the summer. Still, once I retire, I think I'll probably let my hair grow out again. Kind of the way it was back in college. Then again, maybe I won't. Have winged creatures said bye-bye birdie to your yard? I'll show you how to welcome them back with open arms. And we'll find out why this ancient beauty is experiencing a revival all on its own. This program is brought to you by Infinity, luxury cars that inspire at every turn. It begins with a brush stroke, a simple yet powerful line, uniting engineering and emotion, connecting driver to road, separating Infinity from every other luxury car in the world. The newly redesigned Infinity G sedan. This is inspired performance. This is the way of infinity. I thought investment firms were there to help with my investments. So where's that help when I need it? If I could change one thing, we'd all get a ton of great advice just for being a client. Now, shouldn't I be able to talk about my money without it costing me a fortune? If I had my way, investment firms would be falling all over themselves to help me with my investments. At Schwab, investors rule. Are you ready to rule? Need contact lenses? 1-800-CONTACTS makes it simple. Give us your prescription. It's on your box. We verify, then deliver right to your home. Call or log on. 1-800-CONTACTS. We deliver. You save. You think you're so hot. So, what if you can do two things at once? We can do two things at once. Yeah, we can do two things at once. Hi, girls. <gasps> these are perfect. I just love these ovens so much. <laughs> it's okay to play favorites with matching built-in appliances with a free five-year limited warranty from IKEA. True or false? People who switch from GEICO to Allstate save $373. False. It is false. They actually save more. An average of $473 a year. Now that's the right answer. Get ready, America, for HGTV's bold new import from down under. Jamie Dury. Hey, good eye. In his all-new series, The Outdoor Room. I'm constantly traveling, searching for inspiration, and when I find those elements, I turn them into the ultimate outdoor room. Experience the most awe-inspiring, <laughs> amazing backyard makeovers you've ever seen. I think it's going to be a really interesting journey. The Outdoor Room with Jamie Dury. All-new series, Saturday at 9, 8 central on HGTV. Birds are quite a welcoming sight in my yard. Not only do they control the insect population, but their cheerful chirping brings happiness to my home. Like a lot of my friends, the best way to lure them over to my house is to bribe them with lots of good free food. Here, birdie, birdie, birdie. And it looks like my buddy Brad here needs a little help. Hey, Brad. Good morning, Paul. Uh, you ready to explore the world of feeding the birds and maybe moving a little bit past popcorn? Sure. <laughs> That's a waste of good popcorn. 
I got stuff that the birds will like even more. Okay, Brad, I got a display of seed here. Now, first and foremost, good old black oil sunflower. If I had to choose one seed for feeding the birds, this would be it, because it's adored by many, many, many birds. Mixes made from milo, millets, or grains are a little too cheap, cheap, cheap for me. They lack the nutrients that sunflower seeds can give birds. It may cost a little more, but why not give them something that they'll really flutter for? This is an interesting blend. It's called No Mess, and as you can see, it's got some peanuts, it's got some safflower, some sunflower, there's a little cracked corn in there. It's called No Mess because it's been irradiated. In other words, those little birdie table scraps won't drop and take root in your garden. And last but hardly least, this is thistle, also known as Niger seed. Now this stuff is pretty doggone expensive compared to all the other seeds, but it is one of the absolute favorite seeds of the really pretty songbirds like finches. They just love this stuff. And the squirrels don't care much for this either. You can use all these different types individually, or you can combine them into a cocktail mix that'll leave the birds cooing for more. Now, we need to get this into some feeders. Brad, there are all kinds of feeders out there. I mean, all kinds. This is hands down the most popular feeder of all. It's called a tube feeder. When shopping for tube feeders, look for ones with metal feeding stations so thieving squirrels can't chew through and ruin your feeder. You can also find feeders with large holes to hold peanut blends or ones with finer mesh for smaller seed like thistle. This'll do. <laughs> this open air feeder is designed to either hang or sit on the ground for ground feeders such as sparrows, doves, and pigeons, which Brad doesn't seem to care too much for. I, I'm really not interested in, in uh, attracting sky rats. <laughs> sky rats. <laughs> That's funny. My, uh, speaking of squirrels, my relatives always called them uh, tree rats. Same thing. Yeah. One solution to tree rats is to shut them out with this clever contraption. The way this thing works is, if a bird lands on the perch here, he or she can feed all they want right there, okay? Because the seed's gonna be exposed right there. But if a squirrel gets on here, the weight of the squirrel shuts her down. And speaking of extra weight, there are times when the birds need an extra boost of calories. This is suet. This is rendered fat. Uh, but you can get them with chopped up insects, with seeds mixed in them, all kinds of mealy worms, all kinds of little critters that they mix in with this fat. And this stuff is really excellent. This was peanut butter jelly. I love PB&J. Now that we have all the tasties lined up, we need to make sure it's stored in cool, dry areas like the garage or shed, and more importantly, in metal containers. If the bags are left unprotected, rats will get to it, squirrels will get to it, you'll have a mess. So these steel containers work, I think, the best. They keep the seed good and dry. It'll last a good long while. Oh, they're gonna love that. Yeah, they are. You can hear them singing right now. That's like dessert. Boy, I can hardly contain myself. So let's load up the feeders. Using a scoop that doubles as a funnel makes filling the tube feeder a snap. Just scoop, open the funnel, and fill her up. The rest of the feeders are easy enough to fill by scooping or pouring. Yes? No. Yes? No. All right, we gotta stop goofing around and start hanging around. But before we do, we're gonna bang out the base Fix the sticks and mount some munchies. Look at that. Very simple. Very simple, and yet this is perfect. Because this, even though this is squirrel proof, when you mount a feeder on a pole like this, it does make it a little bit more difficult for the squirrels to get at the seed. Now, despite all the efforts, there's no way to keep the squirrels from getting to some of your seed. So why not give them what they want? Squirrels need love too, Paul. <laughs> That's right. And they gotta eat. Now, they love corn. So you can buy this dried corn like this and mount it on a feeder like this. While Brad's busy baiting the squirrels, I'm gonna have myself a little snack. Mm. Was that corn or was that one of my teeth? Maybe I'll just stick with the popcorn. To keep the chirpers chipper, I like feeding them year round, backing off some in the summer so they'll eat insects preying on my precious plants. In the winter, I concentrate on suet and seeds for both migratory and non-migratory visitors. Well, Brad, 
I think your birds are going to be fat and happy for a long time to come. You happy the way things turned out? Yeah, it's awesome. I'm really looking forward to seeing the birds and uh, really appreciate you helping me build the little sanctuary. No problem. But, you know, after all this talk about birds getting fed, I'm still hungry. You got any more of that popcorn? No, but I have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a low-maintenance, low-pest addition to your garden? Coming up, I'll introduce you to an oldie but goodie, the palm granite. And I'll help you add a blast of color to your landscape or home with these beautiful bulbs. We're taking curb appeal to a whole new level. I can see one thing we can change right off the bat. We want to leave having improved the whole block. It's an all-new series, Curb Appeal the Block, Saturday at 9.30. Part of HGTV's design studio. Can I go home and work in your yard with you? The first shopper to say yes will win the landscape lottery. You're going to yeah. come and preview our whole yard? The crash is on. Yard Crashers. See back-to-back -back episodes today at 9.30 on DIY Network. The flavor of soft, sweet caramel. Isn't this how whole grains should taste? Eating well has never been so craveable. With Quaker Caramel Baked Rice Snacks. Wanted to get myself a new cell phone so I could hear myself as a ringtone. Who knew the store would go and check my credit score? Now all they let me have is this dinosaur. Hello, hello, hello. Can anybody hear me? I know, I know, I know. I should have gone to Free credit score and report with enrollment and triple advantage. The Cadillac CTS Sports Sedan. One of car and driver's ten best for the third year in a row. And now... Cadillac announces the new luxury collection lease. What I don't understand is, why didn't someone think of this sooner? This new Purex Complete 3-in-1 laundry sheet cleans in the washer and softens and removes static in the dryer. Purex Complete 3-in-1. It's Purex. Extraordinary. There was only one lawn choice for my family. Heavenly Greens. There was only one lawn choice for my putting green. Heavenly Greens. There was only one lawn choice for the Humane Society of Silicon Valley. Heavenly Greens. When it's time to choose a company for synthetic grass, the choice is simple. Heavenly Greens. The Bay Area's leader for synthetic turf for over 10 years. Heavenly Greens has become the number one choice for more and more people. Tried and true for the past 10 years. The choice was easy. Heavenly, Heavenly Greens. Green. Call or click Heavenly Greens today for your free site survey. Disney on Ice presents Worlds of Fantasy, featuring your favorite stars from Cars, The Little Mermaid, The Lion King, Tinkerbell, and the Disney Fairies. See Tiana, Disney's newest princess, at the Disney Princess pre-show free to ticket holders. Save $5 on tickets at the box office with your day of show BART or Caltrain ticket. Race to see Lightning McQueen and his pals from Radiator Springs at Disney on Ice presents Worlds of Fantasy. Playing in the Bay Area February 24th through March 7th. Tickets are on sale now. Throughout history, the pomegranate has been revered as a symbol of fertility, health, and rebirth. And while you probably love these pucker-producing pouches of paradise because of all the lip-smacking, seed-spitting fun they bring... Man, I just want to go... I'm going to get a straw. I know someone who loves them more. Oh, man! Oh, man! Look at that! This is a mutant pomegranate. Yep, Ed Livo gets pretty excited about pomegranates. When you finally get him to stand still, he's got some great info. Pomegranates have been in cultivation for roughly 3,000 years. It uh, dates back as a staple food source for the Egyptians and the uh, Babylonians. It's been brought throughout the world uh, by sailors who would use it as a staple for sea travel because it lasts so long and it keeps so well. Today, the palm is experiencing a renaissance of its own because it turns out that this ancient jewel is a nutritional dynamo. Pomegranates are very, very high in potassium. 
very high in vitamin C, very high in calcium, and definitely very high in antioxidants, uh, specifically high in lycopene. Here at Wolfskill Germplasm Repository, they collect ancient species of pomegranate from their native lands, places like Iran, Turkey, and Turkmenistan. These varieties are all put into a collection where hybridizers can use them for developing new and exciting um, variety selections of pomegranates that can be more adapted to cold climate, more adapted to drier climates, uh, larger fruit, seedless fruit, better fruit for juicing. Wait a second, did he say seedless? Seedless fruit, this is good for nothing right now. In the future, it may be used as a uh, pomegranate in somebody's breeding program to get whatever gene makes this uh, seedless um, into a, uh, another variety that this quality may be looked for. Other seedless varieties have been developed because all that juicy goodness actually comes from the aerial or aural if you prefer. And these are aerials. And inside of each one of these aerials is a seed. So the aerial actually is a seed sack that has fluid in it and that surrounds the seed. Those seeds can be soft and chewable, hard and spittable, or best of all, the aurals can have no seeds. Ooh, does it make it interesting. Seedless or not, palms can range from raucous red to mellow yellow. There are all kinds of different beautiful colored pomegranates over here. There's this really soft pink variety here, and this very, very nice red, gorgeous red, very soft pink variety over here. And there's an orange one down there. That's pretty cool. The selection seems endless with tantalizing flavors and colorful names like garnet sash, red silk, and sharp velvet. Just how many varieties are there? Who knows? <laughs> Look at this gorgeous variety here. It's called ambrosia. Look at the beautiful pink color and the freckling on the skin. Of course, beauty isn't only skin deep in the case of these tart temptresses. After all, it is what's on the inside that matters most. It's delicious. Try this. To tell if a pomegranate is ready for eating, take a look at the bottom of the fruit. This is called the calyx. It's the bottom of the pomegranate. And usually if it's brown and the flowers are all dried out, that's a good indication. Appreciating these beauties is a lot like sampling fine wines. You examine the color. My goodness, is that red or what? And recognize the subtlety of the intricate flavors. Pink satin, a very, very sweet fruit with little hints of coconut in there. Oh, just almost a tropical kind of flavor. If you're intrigued enough to try growing these glorious globes, here's some good news. Pomegranates for the home garden are actually wonderful because they're maintenance free, relatively pest free, uh, low water requirements. And if you're thinking that pomegranate trees usually get huge. No fruit tree needs to get big in anybody's yard. Pomegranates probably are the best example. As you can see, pomegranates actually produce on new wood, at the end of new wood. So I can see where all the fruit is at throughout the year. If I just take and I prune back all of the top where the fruit isn't, then I'm maintaining the size. The size. I'm keeping the tree down. I think pomegranates are probably one of the easiest plants for size control. They even do great in pots, but... Drainage is very important. Start with a good basic potting mix, plant as usual, remove the steak, and then... Take your plant and cut it off. This way the plant will make a lot more breaks down in this area. You want to take and give as much opportunity for fruiting area to begin because we're going to maintain it as a bush for its entire life. If you're still not into the idea of eating pomegranates, there are also some beautiful ornamental varieties, like this nana. It's a dwarf variety with great spring flowers. Or just spend an afternoon with Ed. He might just convince you to give them another try. Ooh, seems readable. Anybody want to try one? Next, how to force bulbs without exerting too much force at all. Mike Holmes believes if you're going to do it, do it right. We have electrical dangerous issues that can burn your house down. I think it's a good thing we're here. Mike makes it right on an all-new Homes on Homes. Tonight at 10, 9 central on HGTV. Are your closets cramped and cluttered? It's the most common problem in our homes. 
Too much stuff and not enough space. Regular bags just don't protect. And bins and boxes are way too bulky. Well, now there's a solution. Space bag storage packs. Space bags compress your things, making them smaller and giving you up to three times more space instantly. It's easy. Just pack, seal the airtight zipper, and vacuum out the air through the patented one-way valve. Now you can store them under the bed, in the garage, even places you didn't know you had. But no matter where you store them, they're guaranteed to stay sealed and safe from dirt, bugs, and moisture. Everything comes out as fresh as the day you put it in. People love using space bags to protect valuables and stay organized, but most of all, to create more space. Our medium size frees up space in drawers. Our large size holds up to 12 sweaters, and our high capacity cube holds up to two comforters and four pillows. Good Housekeeping calls space bags a smart solution for cramped closets and a better value than plastic bins. Call now and get one medium, one large, and one high-capacity cube for just $19.99. That's less than the cost of just one ruined sweater. But wait, call now and we'll cut the price in half. That's right, you get three of the original space bags for only $10. And we're still not through. Call right now and we'll give you a second high-capacity cube, enough to store all this bedding plus our popular dual-use space bag. You can vacuum out the air for home storage or roll out the air to pack more in your suitcase. But there's more. Call right now and we'll give you the space bag organizer as a bonus. Just pay separate shipping and handling. It's easy to carry and attractive enough to store in plain sight. This six-piece space bag offer is not available in stores. So call now and get one medium, one large, two high-capacity cubes, the new dual-use plus the organizer, a $52 value for just $10. Order now. A cold sore hits and sends you reeling. You just want it to go away, fast. Medicated lip balms can't do what Abriva can. Only Abriva blocks the virus. And it heals cold sores fast. Think fast. Think Abriva. There you go. Ah, the Hernandez is. You're automatically getting a price assurance check from Orbitz because another customer booked your hotel for a lower price. How's he doing? I don't want to look. Ever wonder how florists get beautiful bursts of color from bulbs in pots? Well, it's easy, really, and it's something you can do at home without a whole lot of fuss if you're willing to force them. First, you'll need some bulbs. Today, I'll be using tulip and paper white narcissus bulbs. I've chosen tulip bulbs because they have a chilling requirement. Hey, don't we all? And I've chosen narcissus bulbs because they don't have a chilling requirement. Lucky them. The tulips are going in this pot, which I'll fill to within two inches of the top with a sterilized potting mix. I'll then stick six or seven bulbs in the mix with a flat portion of the bulb along the inside of the pot. Add a bit more mix, but not enough to cover the bulbs completely, and water well. I stuck the flat side of the bulb up against the edge of the pot so that when the flowers grow, they'll grow out away from the pot. You see, if they grow into the pot, then they look really silly. I'll plant the narcissus bulbs a good deal differently by using a shallow pot that doesn't have a drainage hole. First, I'll fill the pot with some perlite, add the bulbs, and then top them off with a layer of decorative stones, again, leaving their tops exposed. And by the way, it doesn't matter which way you orient the bulbs. I'll then fill the pot with water. Okay, let's get back to this whole chilling requirement discussion. You see, these tulips must be kept at temperatures between 35 and 48 degrees Fahrenheit for 13 to 15 weeks. And they must be kept in total darkness. You see, we're trying to trick them into thinking that they're growing underground. And for me, as well as for many of you, the best spot is an unheated garage. Just place an empty pot over the one with the bulbs and keep the soil moist but not soggy watering perhaps once a week for 13 to 15 weeks or until the bulbs sprout. As for the narcissus bulbs, well, they can go directly in the house, sort of. The best place for the pot is a dark closet or cabinet for about three weeks or until they begin to sprout. And while they're in the closet, don't forget to water them. Our narcissus actually grow great in standing water, but if they dry out at all, they simply will not flower. And if you'd like to learn more about forcing bulbs or anything else you've seen on today's show, just click on HGTV.com. When both the tulips and the narcissus are up and growing, place them in the house in a spot where they get indirect light and cool temperatures. The cooler, the better. And in no time at all, you'll have flowers aplenty. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh?